Hello and welcome to our presentation, Embrace a Place. I'm Miguel Strunk, I'm an RA in South Hedges. And my name is Kesley and I'm an RA in Roski Hall. Our presentation today will kind of inform you for next year about the housing options you have, um, whether that's on campus or off campus. So we'll try to do our best job to compare the two unbiased. Um, we went out and gathered a bunch of information from different resources in Bozeman so we could get you reliable information um, and provide good information so you can go out and make a good decision. Alright, so basically you're going to have two options for next year, to live on campus or off campus. Our on campus options would be residence halls, fraternity and sorority living, or family and graduate housing. Whereas if you moved off campus, it would be an apartment, condo, or house. So uh, this is pretty basic, but just to kind of run over, an apartment is typically going to be one to three bedrooms, um, could be part of a complex. Same with a condo or townhouse could be part of a complex, but it's also going to be about two to four bedrooms, whereas a house might be more like two to five bedrooms. So depending on what you need or how many people you want to live with will probably determine which one of these options you'll pick. Cool. So when you're beginning your search, you're going to want to consider some of these things. Um, for example, what type of living environment are you going to want? Are you going to want something that's very studious? Are you going to want a very social house? Um, which then brings you to the types of roommates that you want. Do you want people who are always going to be bringing people over? Do you want um, a big hangout spot? Do you want roommates that are going to be studying all the time and at the library? What type of things are you looking for? Uh, what type of things are you going to need to buy? Does your place come with a washer and a dryer so you can do your laundry? Do you have a dishwasher? Are the utilities included or are you going to have to pay extra on top of rent for that? Um, things like fireplaces, balconies, the number of bedrooms, so the number of roommates you want to have. You want to have four roommates and three bedrooms, or four roommates and four bedrooms. So if you want a house or an apartment, is it pet friendly? Do you want a dog or a cat, or do you want to just keep a fish? Um, collect information on the landlords and rental agencies here in Bozeman. In Bozeman. Have a list of your references ready, so that your landlords can see that you're a responsible person, if you are. Uh, and make sure that you have all of the money ready, so a security deposit and usually first month's rent all needs to be included and ready to pay as soon as you want to lease the apartment. All right, during the search, it's really important to dress appropriately and be on time to things. Again, the landlord's going to be looking for responsible people, so you don't want to show up late or um, be dressed really unprofessionally. Um, so that's why it's really important. It's also important to walk through the neighborhood and get a feel of the area that you're looking at. Make sure you don't just do that in the middle of the day, but maybe also at night and kind of feel the different atmosphere and make sure it's somewhere where you feel comfortable living in. Talk to some neighbors, um, see what their experiences are living there, and don't rush it. Like finding the best place for you may take time and may take looking at more than one unit or more than one house, but it's going to be worth it to you later. So make sure you don't rush that. Don't get discouraged. Take your time and find the right spot for you. All right, so when you're making the decision, you're going to want to consider a lot of different things. Uh, are utilities included? What's their pet policy? Do you even want a pet? Do any of your roommates want a pet? Uh, what's the upkeep of that place? Are you going to have a lawn that you're going to have to mow over the summer? Do you have to constantly shovel the sidewalks in front of your house? What are the penalties for breaking the lease or damaging the apartment? Um, so if you're living in a household full of guys, you're more likely to break something and therefore not get your security deposit back. Uh, so those are all things that you need to consider. Also, see if you can get a hold of people who have lived in that apartment, condo, or house prior to you and talk to them, see what their experience was like, uh, see how their interaction was with the landlord, why they moved out, those types of things so you can get a better idea of what you're moving into. And then also make sure you go back a couple of times before you make a final decision to make sure you actually like the place that you're going to move into. When you're moving in, make sure that you bring like a camera or somebody else with you so you can look through and assess any current damage to the place. There's nothing you would want more than to get charged for something you didn't do. So if there is damage, take pictures of it, write it down so you can tell the landlord about it and maybe get it fixed or at least not charged to you. Uh, you're also going to want to invest in some renter's insurance. It's not that expensive. Most of the major insurance companies provide it, um, and it's relatively affordable, especially for what it's going to save you if something does go, on, go wrong and your apartment burns down. Uh, this might seem trivial. Developing a roommate contract might be something that you 
might not be something you want to do, but it can be useful, especially in talking about like what you're doing on the weekends, who's doing what, um, whether anybody is partaking in any special activities that maybe you don't like to do um, or that you feel uncomfortable around. So those are things that you want to bring up and talk about before you move in so you're comfortable in your own home. You also want to make sure that you're setting up utilities. Uh, so here on the residence halls, everything's set up for you. You don't have to worry about that. But off campus, you're most likely going to have to set up your wireless internet, any internet you want, any cable you want, anything like that. So make sure you set all of that up beforehand. Make sure that garbage service is in your name and any of that stuff before you move in. So it's a smooth transition. All right, so that was kind of the off-campus living options. Now we're gonna look at some of the on-campus living options you have this next year. Starting with the sophomore and above living option, which is really good for returning students. We have it in a couple different places across campus, starting with the North Hedges Suites. Um, the North Hedges Suites are fairly new. Um, they have shared bathrooms with one to three other people, so it's a little bit more private than one of the traditional residence halls. Um, you can kind of look through here, there's a lot of different benefits. Um, it's very close to campus, convenient. Um, refrigerator and microwave are provided in your suite. Um, there's break housing at no additional charge, which is a real um, plus. And also summer housing is available, and there is a clubhouse and kitchen area on the, um, in the main area. So if you want to do some cooking, you have that option too. Um, next we have the Roski Deluxe Singles. Um, Roski also has a sophomore above option on their 10th and 11th floors for the male and females. Um, there are rooms that traditionally are two people to a room, but you get a uh, double as a single up there, so that's really convenient. They're also carpeted, they have a little bit nicer furniture, and the floors are typically a little bit quieter than the rest of the building, which is a really nice um, thing to be a sophomore and have that more quieter living experience. Um, the building also includes a game room, kitchen, a ski wax room, there's laundry on every floor, and there's a piano and large screen TV in the lobby as well. Next we also have South Hedges. They have their own sophomore and above floor. This one is a co-ed living option. And the cool thing about this is the programming is also specifically geared towards those sophomore and above, very similar to the other living options as well. Johnstone Center is unique in that it has a 21 and up option, so if you are 21 and up, um, this is a good place for you to move as well. Um, they also have carpeted large and single rooms, and they have their own sinks in their rooms, which is also very nice and convenient. Okay, so another option on campus is family and graduate housing. They're uh, a little bit different. You have to qualify to live in them. You have to have above 72 credits, um, and you have to have, had, have to have lived in the residence halls for five semesters. They're apartment-like living, so there are a few different options there. Grant Chamberlain Drive has single or double occupancy rooms, 600 square feet. Um, rent ranges from three to $600 a month. Um, you can get unfurnished or furnished apartments. They're pretty nice, a lot of people live in them. Um, quieter, more laid back, you don't have the programming of a typical residence hall, uh, so that's nice. You can also live in the Nelson, Nelson Story and Peter Koch Towers, which are the big ones you see on campus. Their single occupancy units are a little bit smaller, but then again, that's all your space, so it's not really that much smaller. Uh, and once again, you can get furnished or unfurnished units with those. Another option is fraternity and sorority housing. So if you're in one of those, you're gonna know a little bit more about what your house has to offer, whether it has a cook or something like that, whether you have a place to stay, um, whether you have to stay there. So there are a few of the different options. All of the houses have something different to offer. Some of the sororities have a house mother or house director. I don't really know what that is. <laughs> um, living, there are living costs that are included with that. And so you just have to look into that if you're interested in that. All right, next, the big question is how do you choose? How do you decide if you want to live on campus or off campus? This is kind of a little breakdown of some of the major key points that might help you in your direction of where you're going to live. On campus, transportation is going to be pretty minimal. You're gonna, your commute time to class is going to be walking, like maybe five minutes. You also have pretty easy access to parking places, and you're close to all the on-campus events, like sporting events, concerts, whatever it may be. Off-campus, you're gonna your commute time might be like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, if you're living relatively close, you're also gonna have to be paying for gas as well as your parking spot, um, which may be more difficult to get. 
Uh, meal prep, as far as meals go, if you guys really enjoy cooking for yourselves, that may be great, but you have to think if you want to cook every day for yourself. Because um, just remember here, when you're living in the residence halls, you're going to be getting a meals, meals prepared for you all day long, every day. Uh, but the advantage to cooking your own meals is you really get to decide what you want and how you eat. Um, cleaning, um, you may not also realize how much cleaning is done for you, whether it's the custodians on your floor that clean your bathrooms, or if it's even the magic blue conveyor belt in the um, dining hall that takes away all your dirty dishes. So just keep in mind that if you're going to be living off campus, you're going to have to be doing all your own cleaning, your own cleaning of your bathrooms, um, anything like responsibility for lawn um, care, snow removal, and then also be doing your own dishes. Um, finally is community. If you're living on campus, you're going to feel a lot closer ties to the campus community and you're going to be living probably with 20 to 50 people right on your floor, um, whether they're your friends or not, but you're going to be in a very social environment. And then there's a lot of programming and educational opportunities. If you're off campus, you're going to probably be living with more like three to five of your own friends. Um, you'll be part of more of the greater Bozeman community as you'll be living in a neighborhood. You may live next to a family or a bunch of other students. It really varies, but you're not going to feel as close a connection to the campus most likely because you will not be living on campus. But you can kind of host social gatherings when you want, which is different than maybe if you're living in the residence hall where you don't feel like you can have a hangout with friends. Um, that's something that maybe an off-campus living environment might be able to provide for you. Okay, so when you pay your uh, fees and tuition at the beginning of the semester, these are all things that are included. You pay for your room, you pay for all of your meals, so usually that's unlimited with most of the meal plans. You pay for garbage service, water and sewer services, gas and electricity, cable TV, phone line, internet access, and residence advisors. So there are a lot of things that are covered in the one-time cost that you don't really have to worry about later on, which is really, really nice and convenient. You don't have to worry about monthly bills. Off campus, there are the same sort of costs associated. You just have to stay on top of those things and make sure that you're paying for those. Um, some additional things that you might not consider if you guys don't have a laundry and a dryer, um, if you don't have a washer and a dryer in your house, you have to go somewhere else to do laundry, which can sometimes be a little bit more expensive. You also have to pay for your own telephone and internet costs. So there are just a lot of little costs that can add up if you're not looking into that properly. All right, next we just wanted to break down a few meals for you guys to give you an idea of how much it's going to cost you to provide your own meals if you are living off campus. This is kind of a breakdown of what a modest meal might look like if you're kind of eating the minimum. And it's going to look around six and a half dollars a day, which sounds pretty reasonable. Um, it's going to be $192 a month. Um, and keep in mind, yours may vary, but that's kind of what we found is um, a pretty baseline um, low cost for a meal. Alternatively, we also priced out what a non-modest meal would be or something like a little bit more fancy. That includes meat in every meal. Um, and if you like fancy food, you like to cook a lot, your budget may be somewhere more like this where it's going to end up being $22 a day and $657 or whatever a month. So. Really, your food budget can vary depending on who you are and how much you like to cook, how much you like to eat. Um, but this is kind of to give you a little idea if, you're, if you know that you like to eat food that's more um, fancy like this, then maybe you're going to have to start thinking that you're going to be spending a lot more a month than if you originally were like, oh, I'm going to get by a 200 because that might not cut it for you. Okay, so here's a little worksheet that we are providing for you guys if you, so, uh, if you want. It just kind of goes through all of the different things you need to look into when you're looking at a new place off campus. Uh, it has all of those, it has a couple of places that you can compare um, a couple of different options. So maybe at an apartment and a house you're looking at, see what the different prices are so you can do a little bit of a price comparison, pretty straightforward and easily. And then it also has a residence hall so you can compare it back to what you're living in currently. So basically it's up for you guys to decide. If you return to the residence halls, you will get priority over the incoming freshmen, but it's also going to really depend on what your interests are or what your priorities are. If driving to campus isn't really that big of a deal to you because you have a car and you really like to cook your own meals, maybe you want to live off campus. But if you don't have a car, maybe, and you hate doing dishes, maybe on campus is a good option for you. So it's really going to be you having to decide what's most important to you and what fits best with you or your friends or your schedule. Um, and so it's really your unique decision. So we hope that we've helped you guys kind of think about some things maybe you hadn't seen before and um, help 
bring that into your decision, your direction of where you want to go with that. Before we close, I'd like to invite my friend Kaylin, and she is a junior, and she has lived on campus two years. Her first year, she lived in South Hedges, and her second year, she lived in a sophomore above option in the suites, and now she lives off campus in a house with four roommates, I believe. Yes. So she's just going to come share her a little bit of her experience, and if you guys have any questions for her about living off campus or her experience um, thus far, you can ask her. Hi, I am a junior in mechanical engineering and I, um, I lived in South Hedges my freshman year and that was great. I lived in the honors floor. And then uh, sophomore year, my roommate and I decided that we wanted to stay on campus one more year, so we moved into uh, suite number one um, behind North Hedges. So that was also really great because it provided us a little more freedom. Um, as sophomores, you know, we, we got a little more responsibility, but it also, um, we still were able to eat in the residence halls and or eight in the dining halls and everything. And so now we moved into a house with three of our friends, and so there are five people in the house right now, and I love it, it's great. Um, get to, everyone cooks all the time, so we're always sharing food and all that kind of stuff. So I really like living off campus. Awesome, do you guys have any questions for Caitlin about her living experiences? How do you guys uh, divide out bills? Um, so what we do is um, in our rent, we have water included and garbage included. Um, so that takes care of most of it. Um, we have to pay for our own electric. So what we do is we just divide it in five straight up. So it's not, it, it's not really that big of a deal. Are there any disadvantages to living with five other people? Or would you recommend like a smaller environment for quieter people? Yeah, um, so naturally I'm, I'm pretty introverted. So there are times when I have, I have four roommates and three of them are dating people right now. So at any given time there are eight people in our living area. Um, so sometimes, yes, I have to go up to my room and just get away from it all. So if you are more of an introverted person, I would say live with one, maybe two other people. That way, you know, it's, it's quieter, there's not as many people around all the time, and you can get away from it if you need to. Any other questions? Sure. When did you have to start looking for a place off campus? Um, originally, I started looking for a place uh, after my freshman year, because my roommate and I were convinced that we were gonna live off campus, and then um, she said, no, I wanna live on campus, so we, we stopped looking, and then, um, sophomore year, we started looking in like February, March, and then uh, a friend of mine who I actually took home for spring break said, why don't you guys live with us? We have two extra rooms. And we were like, oh, okay. So it kind of just fell into our laps. So we had a plan by the 1st of April. We, we knew where we were going to live by then. So. Is there anything you guys miss about living on campus? Uh, having your meals prepared for you all the time, but I also, I was actually just in Hannon yesterday and I realized that, no, I like cooking my own food most of the time, um, but that's a big thing is just always having access to food whenever you want. Yeah. If I was looking for a place off campus, where would you recommend I look? Uh, well, what are you looking for? An apartment, a condo, a house? Pretty much anything. Anything. So, um, I started with apartment complexes, like ones that I had heard my friends talk about, like Mountain View Apartments is a pretty common one, and that's right across Main Street off of Durston. And um, so if you're looking for like two to three people, that's a good spot. If you're looking for more, I would look for a house. And again, you know, keep your eye out for for rent signs are all over the place, especially coming up in April and May when people are going to start moving out. Um, and also talk to your friends. Talk to your older friends who have lived off campus and say, hey, do you have any openings? You know, do you have a bedroom that's gonna be open? Because a lot of people want people to move in that they already know. Awesome. Any more questions? Cool, well, thank you guys for coming. That concludes our presentation.